In this video, I'm comparing Foundry and Roll20, two of the most popular virtual tabletops, or VTTs for short. This is a bit different to my usual videos, but I think it might be useful for some people. Let's start at the beginning. What actually is a VTT? A VTT is a program designed to aid playing a tabletop RPG virtually. At the most basic level, they provide a place to store character sheets, roll dice, and use battle maps, but they can offer a lot more than that. While you can play a game remotely without a VTT, using one will help to make the game run smoother. Trying to decide which one to use can be a little overwhelming as they're all packed full of features. If you're new to playing RPGs online, it can be difficult to know which features are important. These days I run all of my games online since it makes it easier to get a group together and to deal with scheduling issues. I used to run entirely on Roll20 but around a year ago I switched to Foundry. I've now used both enough to have a good grasp on them. Both VTTs have their pros and cons and there's no clear answer to which is better. It's going to depend on what you want out of your VTT. Hopefully this video will help you to decide which is right for you. The first thing to talk about is the price. Roll20 has a free option whereas Foundry does not. The free option limits you to 100 megabytes of storage and only lets you access the most basic features. If you're just starting out, it can be a great option to dip your toes into running a game online. It probably won't be long before the 100 megabytes of storage becomes limiting. Roll20 offers two subscription options, Plus and Pro. The Plus subscription gives you 3 gigabytes, which is plenty of space, as well as access to dynamic lighting. This subscription will be fine for most people, although several key features will remain locked. If you want access to the more powerful modding, scripting and automation features that Roll20 provides, you'll need to upgrade further to the Pro subscription. I don't personally think this is a great deal, as the scripting functionality in Roll20 is nowhere near the level of Foundry, which I think is a much better system for that kind of thing. Foundry has two payment options. Firstly is the self-hosted route, which is what I use. This is a one-time payment for the application, which you then need to host yourself. This will require a little bit of technical knowledge to get set up, as you'll have to port forward. Honestly, it's not too difficult, and there are plenty of guides on YouTube to help you if you need them. Since your players only need access to the game when you're playing, you don't need to worry about keeping the server application open all of the time either, only when you need it. If for whatever reason you can't self-host Foundry, there are links on Foundry's website to partnered hosting providers, which will do most of the technical heavy lifting for you. Since this requires a subscription, the cost will end up similar to Roll20's premium options. On the bright side, none of these services will gate functionality behind the subscription. If you're using Foundry, you have access to all of the features. With both services, you can split the cost with your group if they're open to that. This can be a great way to reduce the cost of the VTT. Both services also offer marketplaces for both free and paid additional content. We'll get to that later. Overall, if you're not looking to spend any money, Roll20 is the only option. The main drawback is the 100 megabyte space limit, which will blow through quickly. In terms of paid options, Foundry is cheaper if you're able to self-host, as you'll only need to make a single one-off payment. If you can't self-host, then the price is comparable between both services. At first glance, the core features of both Roll20 and Foundry might seem similar, and for the most part they are. They both provide a play space for maps and tokens, as well as to store character sheets and allow dice rolling. The key difference is that with Roll20, most features must be tracked manually. On Foundry, every feature and item is clickable and can be configured to use custom dice rolls and effects. This comes with a cost, however. On Foundry, it's a lot harder to see what all of your features do at a glance. Foundry can be more powerful, but requires more setup time and is less intuitive to use. Roll20 is easy to use, but will require a lot more manual rolling and has limited options for automation. In my opinion, Roll20 has a simpler and more intuitive UI than Foundry. The key strength of Foundry is with its customization. Foundry provides a searchable mod marketplace with a huge number of mods. With these mods, you can really customize Foundry's look and features to your liking. If you want to lean into having the VTT calculate everything for you, then you can do that, but you don't have to. I think for most people, Roll20 is more approachable as it doesn't require any configuration. Foundry generally needs at least a little bit of tweaking to get a good play experience. If you just want to jump into a game with as little prep as possible, Roll20 is the way to go. If you're willing to put in a bit more work, Foundry can offer you much more. One strength of Roll20 being so simple is that it's easy to use. Your players are unlikely to mess something up. In contrast, when using Foundry, I had a couple of my players create characters by making their own features, rather than dragging and dropping the classes from the compendium. Some of them did the same things for spells, items, etc. While this was easily remedied, it highlights one of the main issues with Foundry. As the GM, you're often going to know these programs way better than your players. With Roll20 this isn't a big deal, but with Foundry you may find that your players don't know about all of the features and how to use them properly. It's not too much work to teach your players about these features as they become relevant, but it does add another barrier to confuse newer players. On the other hand, being able to do things like level up or handle rest with the click of a button is a nice quality of life feature for players. With Foundry, you get out what you put in, and a well-configured environment used properly will do a lot of heavy lifting for you. 
While most people are probably just playing D&D 5e, there are other systems out there. For Roll20, support for these systems varies. The further you get away from a D20 D&D style game, the less support there generally is. Even when playing a relatively simple game like 13th Age, I found that Roll20 got quite clunky. When playing more unique systems like Fantasy Flight Star Wars RPGs, Roll20 was pretty much hopeless. While it does vary from system to system, Roll20 can cause you headaches depending on what you're playing. Foundry, owing to its higher mod ability, handles these systems a lot better. You still need to do some work up front, but the end result will be easier to both run and play. Roll20 can get these systems to work, although you'll probably need access to the modding API, which requires the most expensive subscription. When playing non-D&D games, you're also more likely to need to write macros, and in Roll20, their macro system is a pain to use, even for technical users. Your mileage may vary with Roll20 depending on the system you want to play. If it's something simple like Dungeon World or something relatively close to D&D like Pathfinder, you'll be fine. The further from that you go, the more likely you are to have problems. Both Roll20 and Foundry feature a marketplace with free and paid extensions. Foundry's marketplace mostly features free mods to customise your experience. There's a lot of options to completely change how your game plays. Foundry also has a variety of paid extensions, often official support for certain systems like Pathfinder or for third-party sourcebooks. Unfortunately, the official D&D sourcebooks aren't on the marketplace. There are extensions which will let you copy any owned content from D&D Beyond into your game, but these are unofficial, so your mileage may vary. Roll20's marketplace, by contrast, is largely focused on paid tokens, maps, and sourcebooks. There's a variety available, although I personally find the price expensive, and most of the creators offer their work significantly cheaper on Patreon. Since these tokens and maps are just images, there's nothing stopping you from using them with Foundry. Where Roll20's marketplace really shines, though, is with its official D&D content, which can be bought and directly used in your game. It's worth noting that any content bought in the marketplace does not count towards your account storage limit. Many official adventures can be bought on the Roll20 Marketplace and will allow you to run the adventure with almost no prep, as encounters, items and maps can be imported into your game. Foundry has no official Wizards of the Coast support, and so there is no equivalent for the Foundry Marketplace. If you're going to run an official D&D adventure, being able to buy it on Roll20's Marketplace is a big plus for the platform. Foundry and Roll20's Marketplaces serve different purposes. Foundry's is focused around providing a mod browser with some paid content thrown in, Roll20's marketplace is focused on premium content. Roll20 doesn't have an easy way to find modifications to customise and extend your game in the way that Foundry does. Making maps is something you may or may not have to do as a GM. You can often get away with theatre of the mind or by finding maps online to use. Sometimes though, you might find yourself needing to make a dungeon. In my experience, making maps directly in either VTT is fiddly and painful. I wouldn't really recommend making your maps directly in either platform. If you want to make your own maps, you should consider using a third party program. I usually use Dungeon Draft for my maps, which is easy to use and can import into either platform. The maps in the two VTTs support different features. Roll20's dynamic lighting is primitive, and Foundry provides many types of walls, doors, etc. to change how players' sight works. I do sometimes find these features turn the game into too much of a board game, but you can just opt not to use them. Like everything in Foundry, the mapping tools can be modified. I was able to set up maps with multiple levels where players walking on stairs would be instantly transported to the next area. There's a ton of extensions that allow you to set up complex triggers on certain tiles. None of these features are necessary to run the game, but they can make your combat encounters more dynamic. Whether or not you use these features is going to depend on the kind of game you like to run. If you just want a standard battle map like you might use in person, both Roll20 and Foundry support this just fine. Foundry has a lot of nice options for more dynamic maps that Roll20 doesn't, but none of those are mandatory. If you prefer a close to tabletop experience, Roll20's lack of bells and whistles might be appealing. There's less to get in the way. In terms of play experience, Roll20 feels a lot closer to playing in person. Everyone needs to keep track of their own features and you'll often be rolling dice manually. With Foundry, there's a lot less of this in my experience. Foundry has a hotbar that you can drag items, features and spells onto for quick use. During combat, this can be a big time saver, and I often find combat quicker on Foundry. For extensions, it's possible to automate a lot of combat. Some extensions take a while to set up, but even just using simpler ones you can speed things up a ton. How much dead time you have in combat will vary from group to group. In some groups, Foundry will make combat a lot quicker. If everyone knows what they're doing and is quick with their turns anyway, then it won't make much difference. Outside of combat, the two systems are similar. I've found some nice quality of life extensions, but nothing game changing. On both Foundry and Roll20, I find most of the gameplay to be spent roleplaying, and the VTT is invisible in both cases. This is something that's going to vary a lot depending on the style of game you run. Foundry allows advanced users to heavily customise their play experience. The UI for doing this can be clunky at times, so beginner users might find themselves only installing modules that work out of the box. 
Even with simple modules, Foundry feels a lot more powerful than Roll20. Roll20 does allow you to write macros, but the language for doing this is ugly and unpleasant to write. If you're at the stage of wanting to write complex macros in Roll20, I'd seriously consider switching. It's probably clear by now that I prefer Foundry's play experience, primarily due to how it speeds up combat. Despite this, it's undeniable that the two platforms are quite similar. You can definitely argue that Roll20 is closer to tabletop where everything is manual. This is really a question of taste, and I don't think you can make a definitive call as to which is better. They're different systems aimed at different people. I don't think you can really go wrong with either VTT. If you want something simple that's easy to use, Roll20 is probably right for you. Roll20 is free, so it's also a great option if you want to try running a game, but you aren't sure if you'll stick with it. Thanks to the marketplace, Roll20 is also a great option if you want to run an official D&D adventure. Foundry is more powerful in the hands of an advanced user. It's great if you're the kind of person that likes to customise everything to your liking. It's the better option for users who want to take advantage of some of the more advanced tools that VTTs can offer. Hopefully this video has helped to clarify the differences between the two VTTs and helps you to decide which is right for you. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more content. I'm not sure if I'll make any more RPG focused content, but if this video does well, I'll definitely consider it.